today we are trapping animals, but we're doing it with a camera. Camera traps are these awesome little things that you can stick outside for weeks or even months at a time, and anything that walks in front of them will activate it. Now, we don't often have as much time as we would like to go outside and watch wildlife. It might be windy, wet, or dark, and lots of us are probably also working. So, if you can stick these out, it means that you can get a good idea of what's around in your local area, the badgers, the foxes, and all of that, without having to spend as much time outdoors. So where do we want to put these camera traps? Well, what I'm doing now is I'm walking along this footpath through the woods and keeping my eye out for any places where I think animals might have been foraging or have moved through. Now, this one up here looks like it's off the footpath, but, okay, yeah. So this is an animal trail, or they have been using it at least. You can see that they've come through this patch of bluebells just over here and they're actually going up that path and off into the field. So if we stick a camera trap here, there is a really good chance that we will get some wildlife on our camera. Yeah, there's a hazel tree here and there's lots of digging around with some hazel shells on the floor. So this looks like a good place to maybe get some small mammals or some foxes and things that have been moving through the trees. Now before I head into these holly trees to put up the camera, it's really important to note that we wanted to remain hidden from people and animals. Quite often these infrared lights can actually give it away. And on top of that, if you spend lots of time rooting around in the vegetation, you're going to leave lots of markings and also your scent all over the place, which is going to make animals avoid it. And that is exactly what we don't want. So, the fence post just there at the corner of that field looks a perfect position. It's quite sturdy so the camera won't move and it's also quite well hidden from animals and people. So it looks like the perfect place to put the camera. So we've got one camera in the corner of these woods kind of facing around a field which would be good for some terrestrial stuff. And we've also got one camera which I already had out along the river, so hopefully we get some more aquatic kind of things that will be on the camera there. But we've got two more to put out, so that's my job now. And then after that, we can leave them for a few weeks and see what we get. Right, so we've got the camera traps, we've got all four, we've got the one by the river, two up in the woods and the one attached to the fence post, but I didn't want to do this by the river because you wouldn't be able to hit anything. And this place is pretty cool. And the wind shouldn't affect it that much either. So, oh that's awesome. There's a grey heron standing right in front of the camera. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, there's actually trout that are in that little stream, and they can, uh, they're can they probably probably about that big. So it's either hunting trout or uh, some of the frogs and things that are there. <gasps> yes! Yes! Okay, there's an otter in this video. So this stream that I put this camera on is actually the only one that connects the two reservoirs at the top to the foul estuary at the bottom. So it will basically be the only way that the otters are making their way from the sea um, to these reservoirs. And it's really nice and thin and shallow, which means it's a perfect corral. And hopefully, you put a camera trap there, you get an otter, and that's exactly what happened. Now, I bet if we went to that stone that was in the middle, you would find some otter scat or um, sprain there because they use really um, big stones in the middle of rivers or, or logs or bridges or something like that. Really obvious stuff to set up their markers for their territories. But that is so cool. Okay, so this is camera two. Oh, no way! So the deer is actually... That is so... <laughs> that is so cool! Coming to check out what the camera is. It's 
face is right up against the camera. That's so funny. It shows you that a lot of animals will actually use the same little paths that have been, that have been wound out into the ground. Okay, camera two was good. Now let's check camera three. Squirrel again. Well, there's loads of stuff that use this little track. So little we'll rabbit. Fox, nice. Finally, camera four. Nice, nice. Roe deer. These are one of the two native species that we have. The red is obviously much, much larger. So roe deer are actually crepuscular, which means that they, uh, they come out really and they're active more around the dawn and the dusk, just before the sun comes up and goes down and they do love the woods. They'll stay in the woodland and chomp on new shoots and grass and berries and things like that. So sometimes it can be quite hard to see them, but luckily the field um, just next to the woods where they are is actually free of livestock and not a lot of people go there. So they are quite happy to do whatever they please and luckily they're really active on the camera, so this is cool. Buck. That was a good spot actually. Walking right in front of the camera is really nice. You can really see that thick brown reddish coat in this one, which is cool because it, it illustrates the point that uh, roe deer are actually really good in cold environments and they're really widespread across the whole of Europe, even in Scandinavia, because they're so suited to being in these temperate and colder regions. Oh, and a fox again. This one's got a white tail. So you can't actually tell the sexes apart from the coloration. They can either both have the white on the end or not. Um, the dog will be a bit bigger, but uh, uh, really aside from that, you can't, you can't really tell the difference. That's cool though, because it means that there's two foxes using that path. Rabbit. Do you know what, I feel for those rabbits. It's treacherous that, walking along the same path that those foxes are. That's, that's dodgy. We've got loads of stuff, the otters, the badgers, the deer and everything. So, you know, it just goes to show that actually in the local area around houses and farmland, there is loads and loads of wildlife uh, that we don't usually see. So to anybody watching, I would suggest that you go and get one of these cameras, these awesome little camera traps, and you put them up somewhere local to you, somewhere where you think there's some wildlife activity, and see what you can get, because I can guarantee that there will be some awesome wildlife around where you live.